We'll start things off with NASA capturing images of what appears to be the strongest solar flare of the year so far. The agency's Solar Dynamics Observatory capturing images of multiple events on the sun's surface. The sun is acting strange. Solar Cycle 25, the one we are in right now, is shattering all official predictions. It's stronger, more violent, and it's just getting started. Many people are crazy about this, but they are missing the real story. This isn't just another solar cycle. It's the first sign that a much larger, more dangerous pattern has taken hold. It's called the Gleisberg Cycle, a long-forgotten solar heartbeat that dictates eras of peace and chaos. A scientist named Joan Feynman warned us this was coming, and now her life's work is revealing a truth that scientists are finally being forced to admit. A storm is brewing. Something is wrong with the sun. For years, the official forecast from the world's top solar scientists was for a calm and quiet star. They predicted that solar cycle 25, the cycle we are in right now, would be weak, just like the one before it. It was supposed to be another sleepy chapter in the sun's life, giving our hypersensitive technological world a much needed break. But the sun isn't listening. It has awakened, and it's showing a fury that has left experts scrambling for answers. The number of sunspots, the dark blemishes that signal intense magnetic activity, has already skyrocketed past the official predictions. Giant X-class solar flares, the most powerful explosions in the solar system, are erupting with alarming frequency. The sun is far more active than it should be, and the truth is, this isn't a surprise to everyone. It is the fulfillment of a forgotten prophecy. You see, many people are focused on the familiar 11-year solar cycle, the regular rhythm of the sun going from quiet to active and back again. But what many overlooked is that this is just a small cog in a much larger, more mysterious machine. Lurking beneath this well-known pattern is a colossal, century-long cycle of solar behavior known as the Gleisberg cycle. Think of it as a super cycle, a grand heartbeat of the sun that takes roughly 88 years to complete one full beat. This cycle dictates the overall intensity of the smaller 11-year cycles. For several decades, the Gleisberg cycle can create a string of powerful, violent solar cycles, a period known as a grand solar maximum. Then, just as slowly, it can dial everything down, leading to a series of weak, anemic cycles in a period called a grand solar minimum. To put it mildly, we have just come out of a grand solar minimum. The past two solar cycles were some of the weakest in a century. This period of quiet lulled us into a dangerous complacency. While we were busy building our global village, wrapping the planet in a delicate web of satellites, power grids, and communication networks, the sun was sleeping. But now it's waking up. The explosive start to Solar Cycle 25 is the first definitive sign that the great 88-year clock has struck a new hour. We have crossed a threshold from an era of solar peace into a new era of solar violence. This isn't just a theory anymore. This is what the data is screaming. And one brilliant scientist saw it all coming. Her name was Joan Feynman, and before she passed away, she unlocked the secrets of the Gleisberg cycle, revealing a terrifying pattern in the sun's history that we are now destined to repeat. But Feynman didn't just find a cycle, she uncovered a terrifying pattern. Cracking the Solar Code Joan Feynman was one of the most brilliant minds in astrophysics, though she lived much of her life in the shadow of her famous brother, the Nobel Prize-winning physicist Richard Feynman. But her work was just as revolutionary. While others looked at the sun through telescopes, Joan learned to look back in time. She was a scientific detective, hunting for clues about the sun's ancient behavior hidden in the most unlikely places. She knew that to understand the future, you first had to unlock the past, and our official records of sunspots only went back a few hundred years. That wasn't nearly enough to see the grand patterns she was looking for. So, she went deeper. Her genius was in realizing that the Earth itself is a giant history book of solar activity. The thing nobody tells you is that when the sun is very active, it bombards our planet with cosmic rays. This cosmic radiation interacts with our atmosphere in a very specific way, creating rare isotopes, which are like unique chemical fingerprints. Two of the most important are carbon-14 and beryllium-10. These isotopes rain down from the atmosphere and get trapped. Carbon-14 gets absorbed by living things, like trees. So by analyzing the carbon-14 levels in the annual growth rings of ancient trees, some thousands of years old, 
Feynman could create a year-by-year -year record of solar activity stretching back into the mists of time. It's a wow factor to realize a simple tree ring holds the secret history of our star. But she didn't stop there. She hunted down another clue. Beryllium-10, which gets trapped in layers of ice in places like Greenland and Antarctica. By drilling deep ice cores and analyzing the beryllium-10 in each annual layer of ice, she found another independent record of the sun's fury. Then she turned to human history. Feynman pored over ancient astronomical records from places like Korea, China, and Scandinavia, looking for documented sightings of the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. She knew that brilliant widespread auroras that could be seen far to the south were a direct sign of a powerful solar storm hitting the Earth. By compiling all of these different sources, tree rings, ice cores, and ancient texts, she pieced together a timeline of solar activity that was thousands of years long. And in that timeline, a stunning pattern emerged, clear as day, the 88-year Gleisberg cycle. Her timeline was a revelation. It showed that for centuries, the sun had swung between long periods of intense, violent activity and eerie quiet. She could see the infamous Maunder Minimum, a 70-year period in the 17th century, when sunspots practically vanished, which coincided with the coldest part of the Little Ice Age in Europe. Her work proved that these grand cycles were real and they had a profound effect on Earth. She had cracked the solar code. Her timeline revealed that the sun's quiet periods always end the same way. Earth's electrical apocalypse. When the Gleisberg cycle turns and a new grand solar maximum begins, the sun transforms. The familiar, relatively tame 11-year cycles become supercharged. The number of sunspots explodes, creating vast, complex magnetic regions on the sun's surface, some many times larger than the entire planet Earth. These regions become cosmic powder kegs, unleashing solar flares with the energy of billions of nuclear weapons. But the real danger isn't the flash of light, it's what comes next. These explosions often launch a billion-ton cloud of magnetized plasma into space, a monster known as a coronal mass ejection, or CME. And if one of these is aimed at Earth, it becomes a planetary threat. We don't have to guess what this looks like. We have a terrifying historical precedent. The Carrington Event of 1859. During a powerful solar cycle, the largest solar storm ever recorded slammed into Earth. The results were spectacular and scary. The northern lights were so bright that people in the Rocky Mountains could read a newspaper by their light at one in the morning. Auroras were seen as far south as the Caribbean, but the effects on our primitive technology were a grim warning. Telegraph systems across the world went haywire. Operators reported sparks flying from their equipment, giving them electric shocks. Some telegraph papers spontaneously burst into flames. In some cases, the operators disconnected their batteries and found that the storm itself was inducing enough electrical current in the wires to continue sending messages. Now, imagine an event of that magnitude hitting our world today. To put it mildly, it would be a catastrophe. A Carrington-class storm would be the electrical equivalent of a global earthquake, a digital plague that would wipe out the technology that underpins our entire civilization. The first victims would be our satellites in orbit. The intense wave of radiation and charged particles would fry their sensitive electronics, turning thousands of them into dead junk. This means no GPS, no satellite television, no reliable long-distance communication, no advanced weather forecasting. Our eyes in the sky would go blind. Down on the ground, things would get even worse. The CME would induce massive, uncontrolled electrical currents in our power grids. These currents would surge through the long transmission lines, overloading giant transformers, the critical heart of the grid. These transformers, some the size of a house, would overheat and melt. They are not easy to replace. They take months or even years to build and install. A powerful storm could knock out hundreds of them at once, triggering a cascading blackout that could plunge entire continents into darkness for months or even years. Without power, modern life grinds to a halt. No clean water, no refrigeration, no electronic banking, no internet. It would be a return to a pre-industrial age overnight. The estimated cost to the United States alone could be over $2 trillion in the first year. Now, scientists are seeing the signs that Feynman's dire prediction is coming true. 
the Great Solar Maximum. The evidence that we have entered a new, more dangerous solar era is no longer theoretical. It is written in the fire of the sun itself. As Joan Feynman's work predicted, the transition from a grand minimum to a grand maximum isn't subtle. It's announced by a dramatic surge in solar activity, and that is exactly what we are witnessing. Solar cycle 25 was officially predicted to be a weak cycle, with a peak of around 115 sunspots. As of late 2025, the sun has already smashed that prediction, with sunspot numbers regularly soaring above 160 and showing no signs of slowing down. This isn't just about numbers, it's about power. We are seeing more X-class flares, the heavyweights of solar explosions. One recent flare was so powerful it caused a deep radio blackout over the entire continent of Australia. We're also seeing an increase in halo CMEs the ones that appear as an expanding ring around the sun, a telltale sign that a massive cloud of plasma is heading directly for Earth. Solar physicists are now in widespread agreement. The initial forecast was wrong. The sun is awake and the Gleisberg cycle has turned. This is the point of no return. We have crossed the invisible line where the sun's deep magnetic engine has shifted gears. The quiet decades are over and the noisy decades have begun. What many overlooked is that this transition period is one of the most dangerous times. Think of it like a groggy bear waking from a long hibernation. Its behavior is erratic and unpredictable. This is why modern solar observatories like NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory and the Parker Solar Probe, which is flying closer to the sun than any spacecraft in history are so critical. They are our early warning system, giving us unprecedented views of the sun's turmoil. These missions are, in a way, the children of Joan Feynman's legacy. Her historical research told us that a storm was coming, and these modern tools are now showing us how it is forming in real time. They see the vast magnetic filaments, some stretching over half a million miles, writhing on the sun's surface before they snap and hurl plasma into space. The scientific community is now racing to update its models, incorporating the long-term patterns that Feynman championed. Researchers are building on her work trying to refine the 88-year forecast. Is this new grand maximum going to be as strong as the one in the mid-20th century, which produced some of the strongest solar cycles on record? Or could it be even stronger? The initial data from Solar Cycle 25 suggests we need to be prepared for a period of activity at least as strong as the space age has ever seen. The silent admission from the scientific community is clear in their revised forecasts. The giant is awake and the era of superstorms has returned. So, where does this leave us living under this newly awakened star? The hard truth is that Joan Feynman's work gives us both a warning and a gift. The warning is clear. The sun is a variable and at times violent star, and its cycles of fury are a natural and unavoidable part of living in this solar system. The 88-year Gleisberg cycle means that within a human lifetime, the threat level from our own star can change dramatically. The gift she gave us is knowledge. We are the first generation in human history to understand these grand patterns and to see one beginning in real time. Unlike the people in 1859, we can see the storm coming. The question is, what will we do about it? Is our complete reliance on technology a strength? Or have we inadvertently built the perfect trap for ourselves set to be sprung by our own star? Like and subscribe for more answers.